Okay, mind shifters, this is um, this is a discussion about tithing or that maybe I'll do a separate um, video about tithing or it'll be all one video together. But today is November 10th, 2008, 2019, excuse me. And I want to talk to you guys before a financial breakthrough happens. So my pastor has been talking on a series of financial management. It's been going on for, he always jokes like forever. It does seem like it's been going on for a while, but I've been blessed each time. So there was something that happened probably this last year. The last two years, you guys know, spiritual rejuvenation, keto, losing weight, just waking up out of my spiritual, from my spiritual coma. And then reading the word, my son and I are now in the New Testament. We really enjoyed learning about the Old Testament. Just for us, it was more than case studies, even though our mind tend to work that way. It just got into our heart, all the principles that we found, all these nuggets in the Bible. It's like, where was this? That was always been there. Um, so that's why I would encourage anyone who's a new Christian um, or a Christian is to get into the word, really get into the history and have an open heart about things um, and just let it seep into just your spirit. If you're reading to try to negate certain principles, um, I don't, I can't worry about that, but that's just my testimony. But I talked to you guys about when um, a year ago I met, maybe a year and a half ago, a friend of mine who's a friend now, Sunshine walking at work and she started talking about tithing and the importance of it. And she leads like a Bible study like every, like once a week, Every day she meets a group via on the phone and they and she leads, I think, once a week, I believe. But she's just really grounded spiritually and we're just growing from one another. And it didn't really take root until as I started taking classes at church and like, mm, what is this tithing? And oh, OK, like I want to give every area of my life to God. So when I talk about living supernaturally, it doesn't mean that bad things won't happen or there won't be illnesses or just things like that. What I'm starting to learn and see as we get into the New Testament is that the closer you come to God, um, sometimes you attacks will come for a lot of different reasons. And that suffering tends to be either a season or a period of people's lives. So, I mean, once you start getting into the word, it will start to, you'll start to really just be enlightened on what you're doing, especially if you're a Christian. And even if you're not a Christian, I just think people sometimes say, well, how can there be a God if bad things don't happen? I'm starting to see that that's not necessarily, uh, that's not the measure to determine whether there's a God or not, or whether God you know, as we know, what the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost it exist. Actually, that anywho, that's a whole other topic. But I want to talk to you guys. You may see some clips to write about now. You may see some clips that I've been struggling with for months about financial management. But specifically, I started a five to twenty nine twice in my life. I started it when my son, you all know, Eric, was very young. I think he was a baby. And I ended up cashing it out when I was about to get into some issues with my student loans and I ended up cashing it out and, you know, years ago. A few years later, I had just started the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden and I found Michelle Singletary, who's their financial guru, Dave Ramsey at, you know, purchased his financial peace university. I started listening to him and then Susie Orsman. Orzman, when I I didn't have TV and then I got TV, she used to be on in seeing a show. So I used to watch her. And um, and then I got lulled to a deep coma. And that's by choices I made and just all sorts of foolery. And that's how it works, guys. When you're on purpose or you're starting to turn in the right direction, you get all sorts of distractions that come up. And the devil knows what distracts you. Not, you know, something that distracts one person is not going to distract another. So the devil knows what distracts you. And each for each person, it can be different. So long and behold, like the last few months has been 
once I went wholeheartedly and it was the past, I was listening to my pastor's previous sermons. He has a YouTube channel I'll post below. And I started, you know, just listen to Dave Ramsey. I started listening to Bishop T.D. Jakes and just everything around, like, you know, how to handle my finances and just everything. But just and I, I feel to this day that I got spiritually attacked financially and I'm, I know God is, was protecting me from any things that I don't, things that are unseen and unforeseen that I don't know about. And I'm so grateful for that. But the things that could, I see could be seen. Yes, I was just attacked, but I made it in my heart and you guys will see in this series, like from a year ago, like I told you, I was budgeting, which what I was doing was recording, but you see me start to kind of wake up and you'll see where tithing was in my budget. And you'll see as soon as I moved it to the very top, I was still wrestling with things. I was like, oh, net versus gross. I'm still having those type of dialogues with the Holy Spirit and with just my spiritual leaders that I, and papas that I listen to and I respect their interpretation. Of course, they tell you to go back and meditate on the word for yourself. And I was still like, okay, I was still trying to almost like game, not game the system, but trying to still put my hands in things as I put it. But when I relinquished and it's in my heart because you'll see a lot of practical things didn't, they're not coming until now. And I'll tell you guys, I know I'm long with it. When I relinquish I'm like, God is at the top. I don't care what happens. He's at the top. And he's not just at the top, top gross. So what it says that I make on my W-2 and when I get my check, that's the first thing that comes out of my check. And it comes out automatically. Again, this was the testimony and the encouragement and instruction from Sunshine Walking. It was like, it has to be like the first, the the very, the top. And I really didn't understand. I'm like, as long as you budget in, like I really have just really kind of meta, uh, like evolved through this, you know, spiritually and just understanding. No, it's where you put God. He's at the very top. Again, this is not a salvation issue. This is not about perfection. This is not about works. It's just like my heart, you know? As soon as I start doing that, guys, everything, not everything I'm kind of embellishing, but things that, that weren't anticipated, weren't planned to go wrong, but that needed financial gains or you need some sort of savings to remedy occurred and it occurred at the same time. It was just, I don't know, at the time I had a rental, it was just, it was just one thing after another and then one thing after another here. So fast forward, my son and I have been steadfast and we've been growing and we're each other's accountability partner and we're each other's when we start to go, like we're not talking to God, we'll yank each other back. And I started thinking he's graduating. Like I don't really get into discussions with his papa about his contributions, if any, I'm just not that type of, I, I don't even, that's a whole nother discussion. Not because I just don't even get into that discussion. I've just always been very critical about me. And it's just like, I feel like I failed him once. But I told you guys a few years ago, right before I purchased this house, I opened up a 5, 529 plan again and say, I'm at least try to help him with something. And so through my friends at work, and my spiritual friend, Sunshine Walker, and she's like, you need to cash it out. And I just kept hearing confirmations about that. And I even did a, several videos like I'm struggling with this. So I kept struggling and it just seemed like things got worse. So finally, I relinquished and I sent the notification to the Maryland 529 plan and they stopped the allotments because I was doing automatic, a lot, um, automatic withdrawals from my account to go into his 529 and I didn't get a check. So I'm like, Ooh, maybe this is a test. And like Abraham and Isaac and God is going to be like, Oh, you was going to sacrifice. It was just a test. So there's a ram in the bush and you don't have to sacrifice your, your Isaac. Right. And that sound good. And then I actually got in the nerve to write Dave Ramsey, his people, because I was just started watching him and they saw he had an email and they are wonderful. I could tell already. I only had one interaction or two interactions and that's another, um, but it, all wonderful. And the person who responded, her, she was just like, well, 
we would, you know, probably, you know, definitely tell you to, and I'll post a, hopefully I'm not I'm paraphrasing. I think she was like, oh yeah, the fact that she stopped the withdrawals, thumbs up, but we wouldn't tell you to cash it in, cash it out because you wouldn't be using it for school funds and it'll be, you'll get a penalty and um, it's a penalty and something else, it's, you know, a penalty and they also tax you on, on what you take out. And because I'm walking through this mindset with them, I just want to see. And so I'm like, OK, that's the answer. No, that's not the answer, guys. The answer is and then I prayed again. I'm like, God, I know it's like the hundredth time, the hundredth and first time. Let me pray one more time. You know, maybe am I not hearing you? Like, what would you say? Da, 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 da. And so, no, it's like, uh, uh. So Pastor Today, he's been doing a series. I think last week was tithing, but this uh, week was like the five keys to giving or whatever, the five points of giving. And I want to read something to you guys. And I once I have I'm selling my stuff. Thank you, Uncle Ramsey, uh, for let go and different apps. I'll do a, a video about that. So I gotta meet someone soon, but when I get back, I'm gonna make sure I figure out how to get that cash out. No, that's not meant to be a sacrifice or whatever. Like God's like, no, don't do it. And whatever penalties I have to take uh, with the state and this, that, and the third, because this is this is not even a test. This is about like what I believe. I believe that God will supernaturally cover my son. And it's not even about me getting penalized for the taxes. That has been my biggest, like I've just felt like such a failure as a mom. And it's like the one thing that my son can say is like, at least I exposed him to the word of God and, and, and things like that. And arguably, hopefully that's the most important thing. He'll see it that way. Um, so I did call him today because I made the decision and I'll, I'll read to you guys my notes and give you references. And, and then I'll tell you what I talked to him and what his response was. Let me hurry up because I'm supposed to meet someone. Um, Five keys of giving. Um, God wants to wants you to give more. God's been waiting to see what some of y'all are going to do. Give your fir first fruits off the top at the beginning. Proverbs three nine through ten. Read those guys, and I may put it in the um, the description. The top priority, and it's on all your increase. Give your give God your best. Second Samuel twenty four eighteen through twenty five. And I put a note to myself, go home and find out how to cash out the 529. And it talks about obedience is better than sacrifice. And when I get back, I do want to read that to you guys. Or again, I may put it in the description. And it's about um, obedience being better than sacrifice. When making a sacrifice to God, it needs to cost you something. Give obediently, 1 Samuel 15, 9 through 22. And that's to obey is better, to obey is better than sacrifice. I wrestled and I prayed and I prayed and I wrestled. That was makes me reference what Pastor was talking about, his situation. Because he's very, I can tell he's very good with his money. And he had a situation where they got into debt. And for the last 30 years, like he, there's a teaching church, of you, you know, just to give y'all insight. And he was talking about a decision and he, he, he was obedient and God blessed him. Give to God honestly. A lot of people may not be honest with themselves. So reference Acts 5, 1 through 11. And that's the story about the husband and wife who at the time, a lot of folks, once they found Christ, they were giving away all their possessions, making sure the church was taken care of. And so this one husband and wife said they did that, but they actually lied and Paul knew it. And so he's like, basically be honest. And because they were dishonest, they end up dying. Um, be honest with God. Psalm 133 talks about unity. And he referenced to the husband and wives to make sure you're unified on everything. Be on one accord. Give expectantly. Second Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. Read that, guys. How you give is just as what is important as what you give. God, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So it's about your heart. Like my heart is at this point. So let me tell you guys, I made the decision. So because I'm still that guilt, right? Um I call my son. He's with his papa. And I'm like, how are you? He said, Ma, is everything good? You're good. How was work? Because I have my part-time gigs. Da, 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 da. He's like, is everything okay? And I was just letting him know how grateful I am to God that he trusted me to watch him and to help him grow into the person he is. 
and I'm sorry like I didn't do everything that I wish I'd done and my son's like mom are you okay like I'm like no these are happy tears and I'm crying now he's like mom you're good you're I love you like you you've given me everything like stop and I'm just like you know just know that God is he's he has you covered and I specifically asked my son, like, are you mad? Like, I don't have, and I think I've asked him several times, like, um, that, you know, he's applying for jobs and internships and I'm just like, you know, I'm sorry. Like I didn't prepare. And he goes, he says this, this is confirmation guys. He's like, God's made provisions for me. So I'm telling you guys, the testimony and pastor was talking about sometimes we think monetarily or resources and it's not that's not how our blessings our blessings could come in being in our right frame of mind health life to wake up our health I mean there is no cost to that it could be enlightenment it really is not always like people thinking dollar dollar bill or possessions and I just want you guys to come away with this. Obey Obedience is, is better than sacrifice. And if you give over your finances and every, your mental state, everything to God, He and you really truly invite him in, I'm telling you, like your life will be forever changed. And I know this isn't, you know, you guys know I'm a Christian. That's a big part of my life. And I hope people see Christ when they encounter me. It does not mean that I will not be upset or say swear or be mad at times, but hopefully it means that I'll be convicted enough to be able to apologize and to make my wrongs right. And um, that's just it, guys. So I will update you guys when I actually find out how to get the disbursement. And of course, I will tithe off of that and I will pay down my, my the next snowball and I will just act accordingly to God's principles. And anyone, again, if you're not Christian, I'll put a disclaimer. So if you don't want to watch this, that's fine. But I need you to understand that there's a lot of Christian principles that are universal, pretty short in other holy books, I guess. I don't, I haven't, I'm not learning about them, but they're universal principles. You do not have to believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ is our Savior and, and things that I believe in. But it, it, there are universal principles to help you live um, a, a, a beneficial life, like a life that's worth, has meaning and purpose. Um, so that's all I want to say, mind shifters. I'm on this journey. Maybe at the end of this video, you will see the actual disbursement, not the amount, but you'll see that, you know, I, I've stopped wrestling. I've prayed and I've been going back and forth and I'm taking my hand off my son and I'm taking my hand off of things and I realize God has protected my friends, their family, my family. He's just, it's things that you can't put a price on, you know, and just my whole mindset, it's just really has changed. I love you guys. If you need any assistance with keto or low carb diet planning, reach out to me. If you need any assistance setting up your Excel spreadsheet or something like that, or just want to kind of talk through about finances, let me know. And um, just my shifters out. Tithing, above all, is an act of faith. When you give, God promises you will receive. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it.